Good afternoon. It is Monday, July 20th, and on your screen is a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket as it awaits its 5.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. My name is Michael Andrews, and I'm a supply chain supervisor here at SpaceX. And welcome to our webcast coverage for the Anasys 2 mission. Our customer today is Lockheed Martin on behalf of the Republic of Korea. Per the customer's request, we will not show payload deployment today. However, we will stay live on the webcast and bring you verbal confirmation of spacecraft separation. We are just at under T minus 11 minutes and counting, and all systems are go for an on-time liftoff this afternoon. But if for some reason we are not able to launch today, we do have a backup window tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, now let's take a closer look at the vehicle that will launch our payload today. On your screen is that view of Space Launch Complex 40 with the Falcon 9 rocket. It's our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle getting ready for liftoff. Falcon 9 stands at about 230 feet tall, 70 meters tall. Uh, that's greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. It's designed to be re reflown 10 or more times with minimal refurbishment between flights. And as you can tell from the re-entry soot on that first stage, it's pretty easy to spot a flight-proven booster. Today will be the second flight for this particular first stage, and actually less than two months ago, it was the one that launched Bob and Doug to the International Space Station on our historic Demo-2 mission. At the bottom of that first stage, there are nine Merlin engines. They get Falcon 9 off the ground up to the thinner parts of Earth's atmosphere before separating from second stage and making its way back down to Earth for landing. And it's this part of the rocket that we will attempt to recover for a second time on our drone ship, known as Just Read the Instructions. You can see it there. It's stationed 350 nautical miles east of our launch site. And above the first stage, above that black interstage band, is our second stage. At about T plus uh, 2.5 minutes into flight, the first and second stage will separate, and that second stage will ignite its single MVAC engine. That'll carry the Anasys 2 spacecraft to its intended orbit. And the Anasys 2 satellite is currently safely enclosed inside the 17-foot diameter payload fairing. It's that structure on the very top of the rocket. This protects the satellites from aerodynamic heating, loads, any kind of contamination that we might experience during ascent. But once we reach the vacuum of space, we no longer need those fairing halves, and we jettison them while the second stage continues to orbit. The fairing halves we're using today are a brand new set, which means we'll be attempting to recover them today using our two recovery ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chiff. Two minutes before the fairings are set to land, the team will decide if conditions are good to make a safe catch attempt. Now, weather plays a big factor in the decision, uh, as it can impact not only the sea states for the boats, but also the fairings' altitude, position, and speed, uh, all of which impact how the fairing will fall back to Earth. And finally, around the Falcon 9 rocket is that large truss structure. It's called the transporter erector. We call it the TE. The TE rolls Falcon 9 to the launch pad and raises it to that vertical launch position and also routes things like power, fluids, and communication to the rocket and satellite. Hi, I'm John Insperker, Falcon 9 Principal Integration Engineer here at SpaceX. We're coming up on eight minutes to launch and all conditions continue to be go for launch. Falcon 9 rolled out to the pad Sunday afternoon about 25 hours before launch and went vertical four hours later. Now, more recently, the SpaceX launch director held the go, no-go poll for both prop load and launch. That was done at T minus 38 minutes. Now, we're currently working no issues on the Falcon 9 launch vehicle. If we do have to call a hold on today's launch, we have a nearly four-hour window that could allow us to reload the ultra-cold liquid oxygen and make another launch attempt today. Of course, that presumes that we understand whatever caused us to hold the count and we can safely proceed with a recycle and launch. Now, if we cannot continue today, we have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. Now, we've been loading propellants on Falcon 9 since T minus 35 minutes, putting fuel into both stages and oxidizer into the first stage. Our fuel is the refined form of kerosene known as RP-1. The fuel is fully loaded on the second stage, and we're going to finish loading the first stage in about another minute. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, our oxidizer is super chilled liquid oxygen. We call it LOX. Now, the LOX is currently loading into both the first and second stage. You can see the, the mist streaming off of the first and second stage tanks. And until it started. Now, I mentioned it is super chilled. We do this in order to load more LOX into the tanks and increase performance. Typically, launch providers use LOX right near its boiling point of about 300 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. At SpaceX, we chill the locks about 40 degrees colder. That makes it denser. It lets us load more into the first and second stages. Now, we have to load the locks as late as possible to keep it from warming up 
and decreasing the performance. We're also finishing helium loading onto the first and second stage tanks. Now as the Merlin engine pumps pull the RP-1 and locks out of the tanks, we need to fill that emptying volume that we call the ullage. We use the helium stored in pressure vessels on the stages and it's heated by the exhaust of the engine's gas generators. Heating the helium helps it expand to fill the tanks. Now a moment ago at T-minus seven minutes, we heard engine chill begin. We're now allowing a small amount of the super chilled liquid oxygen to flow past the turbo pump inlets. That's cooling them down to avoid thermal shocks when we light the engines at T-minus two seconds. And on the spacecraft side, the team did transition the Anasys 2 payload to internal battery power starting inside of T-minus 30 minutes. That work is complete. There are no issues, and there are no further actions required before launch. We're launching out of the eastern range. The good news is air and sea space is clear. Weather balloons that have been released show the upper altitude weather is good. We did have to delay the T-0 30 minutes for a small rain shower that was crossing the trajectory path. That was moving out of the way, so right now, weather looks to be good for a launch in just over five minutes, as all systems continue to be go for liftoff at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. As we mentioned earlier, our customer today is Lockheed Martin on behalf of the Republic of Korea. We now have a quick message to share from Korea's president of the Agency for Defense Development. 안녕하십니까? 국방과학연구소 소장 남세규입니다. 코로나 19로 어려운 환경에도 불구하고 아나시스트 위성 발사에 관심이 있으신 여러분께 감사드립니다. 아나시스트 위성은 한반도 평화를 위한 것으로 한국의 IT와 우주 분야 연구 개발의 한 단계 도약이 되길 희망합니다. 원래 창설 50주년을 맞는 국방과학연구소는 아나시스트 위성 발사의 의미가 남달라 저도 코로나 19 상황으로 발사장에 직접 참여하지 못해서 안타깝게 생각합니다. 비록 물리적 거리가 멀리 있지만 지능적인 온라인상의 사회적으로 가까워진 거리와 시간 때문에 저도 마음은 발사장에 계시는 전문가 동료 여러분들과 함께하고 있습니다. 라키드 마틴, 에어버스 그리고 세상에서 가장 스마트한 펠콘 9 발사체의 발사를 주관하는 스페이스 X 모든 분들의 노력에 감사드립니다. 아나시스트 위성은 대한민국 국방부, 방위사업청, 합동참모본부 각군 관계자와 특히 함께 연구한 국방과학연구소 위성통신체계단이 응원하고 있습니다. 아나시스트 위성발사와 목표한 궤도 내 시험까지 성공하길 진심으로 기원합니다. 우주의 신들은 하늘길을 열어라. 벨콘 나인 나가신다. 아나시스트 완벽하라. 감사합니다. We're currently three and a half minutes from liftoff. Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. The vehicle remains in good health. Now, during that video, the transport director Strongback did retract to the launch position, moved a couple degrees away. That's what we need, sufficient for liftoff of the Falcon 9. Fuel loading is complete on both first and second stages. The liquid oxygen loading is wrapping up on the first stage and will complete at T-minus two minutes on the second stage. Now one minute before liftoff, you'll hear the announcement that Falcon 9 isn't startup. That means the rocket's internal computers on first and second stage are controlling the launch countdown. Now the mission manager reports the Anasys 2 space vehicle continues to be go. The range continues to be green for launch and the weather is looking good. Now once again, as a reminder, if we don't launch today, we have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. Two and a half minutes to launch. We have closed out the first stage liquid oxygen load. That just leaves stage two locks loading to finish. That call out tells us that the chill sequence we began at T minus seven minutes is now complete. Stage two locks load is complete. That completes propellant loading on the Falcon 9. Stage two locks load, the last one to finish up inside of two minutes. We'll now begin venting down the plumbing lines that go up that strong back that you can see behind the Falcon 9. 
So if you see a, a plume of white uh, gas coming out, that's normal. See in the view from the camera, we're now venting down the liquid oxygen lines on the strong back, getting ready for launch. Next event will be startup coming at T minus one minute. Falcon 9 is in startup. Here's the call out. We're in startup. We're now pressurizing first and second stage tanks for flight. LD countdown net, go for launch. There we go, the final call to SpaceX launch director is given to go for launch. We're at T minus 35 seconds and counting, all systems are go. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Lift off. M1D propulsion is nominal. Plus 40 seconds, everything looking good? That's the call out, says M1D engines are throttling down, getting ready to reduce vehicle acceleration in preparation for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the bottom of the throttle bucket, as they call it. Now the Merlin engines coming back up to full power as we get ready to go supersonic. Equal supersonic. Supersonic, we're coming through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Well, has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. Guidance engineer confirms we're through the period of greatest pressure on the vehicle. Continuing downrange, trajectory looks good. Propulsion looks good. Avionics looks good. And Becky Chill has started. That announcement from stage two propulsion. We are now beginning to chill in the turbo pump on the upper stage engine to get ready for its ignition coming up in about 45 seconds. Nice view from the SpaceX cameras at Cape Canaveral as we head east out of Space Launch Complex 40 into the first of two orbits planned for today. This orbit is the parking orbit, a low Earth orbit uh, trajectory that will take us uh, over the equator and will eventually relight the upper stage engine to transfer us into the desired geostationary transfer orbit. Now main engine cutoff, or MECO, coming up in several seconds, followed by pneumatic separation. The first stage pushes away from the second stage, and then ignition of the second stage engine. Mika. Separation confirmed. Miko on time. Stage up looks good. And the call out MVAC D engine is at full power. The view on the left screen, you can see the large titanium grid fins now slowly opening. That begins about a two minute period as we slowly rotate the first stage around to get it ready to come back through the atmosphere and land on the drone ship in the Atlantic off the east coast of Florida. Right hand side, second stage engine glowing red. That's normal for the MVAC D. Trajectory. Trajectory is nominal, we've heard from the guidance engineer. Great views coming from space.
We're coming up on fairing deploy. Fairing separation confirmed. And we've heard the call out from the avionics engineer. Fairing separation is confirmed. I think you can see in the background behind the MVAC D nozzle, uh, one half of the fairing way in the distance uh, as it went past the camera. So right now we're coming up four minutes into flight. Trajectory is looking excellent. We're right down the middle of the road. Power on the upper stage engine is good. Bermuda is now getting the telemetry from the Falcon 9, and we're getting great views from space at T plus 4 minutes and 13 seconds. For those of you just joining us, we had a successful liftoff of our Falcon 9 rocket at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, from Cape Canaveral. Uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, our second stage, uh, its engine is glowing as we continue to take the Anasys 2 satellite payload to its desired orbit. Uh, on the left-hand side, our first stage, we're beginning, to, uh, we're beginning our recovery attempt on our drone ship uh, out in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the next milestones coming up include that first stage's entry burn, followed by the second stage engine cutoff, known as Seco-1, uh, the first stage landing burn, and then that hopeful landing. The entry burn will occur at about six and a half minutes after liftoff. And what you don't see pictured here are those two fairing halves. They've been jettisoned. Uh, and it will take some time for them to get down to, uh, to sea level. So we won't be covering uh, on the webcast that recovery attempt status, but stay tuned on social media for updates. You see some pretty clear pictures of Earth there. Uh, the first stage has reached Apogee. It's beginning to head down there. Uh, we're only going to be firing three of our Merlin engines during this entry burn in order to slow the vehicle down before it gets to the thicker parts of Earth's atmosphere. It'll slow the vehicle by about 25%. Uh, when we perform uh, stage separation, uh, that first stage was traveling about two and a half kilometers per second. So we have a lot of velocity to reduce. and we're just under 30 seconds from that entry burn beginning. It's gonna last about 24 seconds. We're 10 seconds away from entry burn. Hopefully we'll be able to hear that call out and have visual confirmation that burn's begun. Stage one, entry burn startup. Our entry burn has begun. You'll see that, that uh, the exhaust there will grow and start to become elliptical as we turn on the engines. The center engine fires first, the two side engines fire shortly after that. So that exhaust will seem to grow during this burn. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. All right, one burn down, one to go. That's the landing burn. Uh, it'll occur in about one minute from now, along with uh, the next milestone, uh, the second stage engine cutoff, or Seco-1. Uh, that'll be at T plus eight minutes, seven seconds. Uh, during Seco-1, we shut down the second stage MVAC engine on the right-hand side of the screen. Also signal first stage, Cape Canaveral expected. In about 25 seconds after Seco-1, Falcon 9 will touch down, hopefully, on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Uh, currently, it's in the Atlantic, uh, about 350 nautical miles off the coast of Florida. Start of terminal guidance. And in terms of velocity of that first stage, uh, drag alone is slowing the first stage down another 80%. That landing burn will take us back to get that last 20%, touch us down safely. Just under 10 seconds from landing burn and Seco 1. Seco. Stage one, landing burn, startup. We have confirmation of both landing burn and Seco-1. We're waiting confirmation of a good orbital insertion for that Anasys-2 satellite.
landing Stage laser. one. So landing laser deploying now. Nominal park orbit insertion. And there it is. That is our 57th successful landing with Falcon 9 on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. While we were watching that landing, we also had confirmation of nominal orbit insertion. Uh, we're all pretty excited over here at SpaceX for being able to use this uh, first stage for a third time coming up. Uh, but going back to our primary mission on the second stage, uh, it's going to coast for about 18 minutes until we cross the equator where we perform the second of two burns of the upper stage to help change the orbit. Uh, we're going to take a break until then. We're going to leave you with a map of where we are in the mission. We'll be back at uh, about T plus 26 minutes for the second burn of our MVAC engine. Also signal Bermuda as expected. 